Turn that off. All right, we're live. Turn this off. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's emergency session of the Mary Trump Show with my Nerd Avengers. Hi, Norm. Hi, Brian. Hi, Mary. How's Hi, Mary. it going? It's a good day. It is a good day. <laughs> and I just, before we dive in, um, I, I just want to give everybody a little bit of life advice. If uh, the Attorney General of the state in which you do business um, has some potential charges to bring against you 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 should probably uh hope that her the press conference outlining them yeah. is is not as long as lawrence of arabia and that the uh the complaint is not as long as war and peace so you know uh or brothers karamazov or whatever hi jen <laughs> so you know um sometimes sometimes it pays Life is good to uh, hang in there, right? I mean, Norm, look at that smile on Norm's face. I love yeah. it. What is your, what is the biggest takeaway for you? Um, because, you know, in watching the, the press conference the first time, it just never st stopped. <laughs> it was unrelenting. Well, I had two takeaways. I mean, one was, God, do they have him and the rest of the family uh, yeah. by the short hairs? Uh, the okay. evidence is just so overwhelming, and it just kept coming, example after example after example. Um, the second is uh, the response to the question by Josh Gerstein that mm -hmm. they're in conversations with Deutsche Bank, and Deutsche Bank is cooperating. Uh, and uh, Cushman and Wakefield is under investigation. Um, so uh, there's a lot more to come here. Uh, uh, just one other uh, little comment, which is I, I just got such a laugh out of the idea that the defense here is, well, this is just what everybody in real estate does. Yeah. And yeah, I immediately thought, so this would be like Lucky Luciano saying, you know, Al Capone, Bugsy Siegel, they all do it. <laughs> That's a great defense to have. Well, it has the benefit of being true, perhaps, but that yeah. doesn't mean it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, one, it was a great question that he asked. And two, it just shows you, Jen, uh, white collar crime expert in our midst, that it takes a village to commit lots of fraud <laughs> over decades. <laughs> Uh, so speaking of the village, um, today uh, we were supposed to be getting, be beginning mail fraud in my white collar crime class, but I did something. You know, every semester sometimes you just gotta shake things up. I so I just the class, syllabus. <laughs> I said, you know, you can just march through the syllabus sometimes, and sometimes you can just not and what we did today i said this is kind of like what it would be like if we were to, we really had jobs i said let's do this role play i said we're gonna have a guest come visit and the guest was a guest i was gonna be showing the video of the press conference i said our guest is our pretend guest is gonna come and we're gonna all pretend that all 28 of us work for the um southern district of new york we are federal prosecutors and we're about to get someone come talk to us about a set of facts. And they're going to make a referral to us under two federal statutes, which are on page nine of the complaint. I didn't tell them this, but and I wrote down the two main federal statutes. I left the IRS stuff separately. Mm -hmm. And I said these two federal statutes and I put them out um, 18 USC, 1014, 18 USC. Um, now, uh, I think it's 13, 34. 1344. And I said, we haven't studied these yet, but we have 15 minutes to figure out what the elements of these are so that when we hear this person talk, we can listen carefully to see whether we'd be able to build a case. And we're going to continue mm -hmm. this this semester. And we're going to have to look at both sides um, and see where the weaknesses are. And so my students did this thing. We looked at it, we figured out the elements. And then I played them the press conference because I'd listened to it before and I was overwhelmed with one thing after another. But when you listen to it, only looking for those two statutes and the referral, it's like, 
you're just, I, I know I'm being a little bit nerdy and I just, it was such a great. Have you exercise. been on the show before? You're actually winning the nerd of the day award. Because I it was such a great exercise because I said to my students, how many of you are glad we, we wrote what the elements of the statute were first? And they were, absolutely were. They actually saw that it helped to be prepared before a bunch yeah. of facts fly at you. Yeah. Um, and then I said, okay, I want to be fair and I want to show the other side. And I know they haven't done their response to the complaint. It's not due yet. It was just filed today. I wish them luck. Yeah. And so I said, how will we go about fighting this? And, I, and so we found some news stories and everyone's like, how about true social? And, you know, all of it, they immediately noticed that there were no responses on the mayor. The closest thing we get is Al Capone does it too. But mostly it was this person's biased or she needs. She's to- racist, apparently. Yeah. And she that wants to, do this to get reelected. And I'm like, um, that's not really going to answer for the elements. And then I said, right. you just, anyway, the next thing. Although it'll do, probably work because, it, you know, it's New York. But what I said to them is the next thing to do. I'm like, how would you actually, you know, tighten up what these elements are so you feel really comfortable? And they're like, do some research. And I'm like, no, that's what we tell you in law school. Go find some jury instructions in the jurisdiction. So we're like building this thing. And I told them normally or the, the exam, you can't sh- work with anybody, but our midterm is going to be, we can talk to anybody. Mm-hmm. You can talk to each other and then, and then um, just write it yourself. Okay, we're acting like we're actually real attorneys um, together. Well, and it's one of the most exciting things. And I, and I, I don't want to tell everyone they're going to get an A, um, but they could if they actually work hard and write well. And anyway, I'm just so thrilled because it became a real mm-hmm. good and then exercise. And then I'm, um, one more thing, as you know, we also have in like three weeks, um, the other trial mm-hmm. of Weisselberg and the, you know, yep. so there's a lot going on. Anyway, I'm, I'm just very happy that I threw away the, the lesson plan. But listen, but that, the, that's, that's the best way, uh, to, to teach, you know, when, when, when what you're teaching is relevant and you can show your students how it, how it actually works in the real world. And, uh, yes, oh, wait, think- that's what though, Mary, there's one bad thing. Well, one bad yeah, this is you're not going to like this because, um, you know, I'm I, feeling I'm good. Classroom. What are you doing, man? I'm no, when I'm in the classroom, I actually have to, you know, I it's my obligation to imagine this person would be my client. I said, you know, you know, I probably never take this guy on as my client. And I said, but if you were my client, I know exactly what I would do right now. I said, first of all, whether or not he's going to settle this case, I would get, I said, in 48 hours, he could raise $200 million. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, I said, the only thing about the settlement, so it's not the money. He could raise the money. He doesn't, he won't want to settle because it's going to inhibit his ability to do business mm-hmm. or ego stuff. The issue isn't the civil case. This thing will settle. It's like everything else settles, right? Well, he tried well, and clearly he lowballed uh, the attorney general. Otherwise, we, we, she wouldn't have had this press conference. And I don't know. I mean, I think they're under so much scrutiny for uh, the other potential fraud they committed by raising money off of the uh big lie and then using the money for other purposes which i don't oh, think you're to say this per- this person's after me i yeah. need 200 million dollars well, i don't think you could raise it <laughs> i okay but that let's let's focus on why we're feeling giddy no, right no, now this is why i'm feeling good though because the money thing isn't gonna ha- the only thing that's going to bring him down Mm-hmm. is if SDNY does what my students and I are doing mm-hmm. and figures out, is this a case that they can win or not? And the IRS. Have. I yeah. think that's the point. I, the right. reason why I'm smiling today is because this is the opening salvo. Right. The civil is the opening salvo. They have been working hand in hand with, S, with, with uh, the federal justice department. Those people are going to come down on him. The state's going to come down on him. This is just the first shot. It's the first nail in the coffin, and it's a big one. And Brian, you know, but when I found out, I think it might have been you, Jen, uh, who texted in the group uh, that, you know, letting us know about the lawsuit. And my response was, great, another fucking lawsuit. I mean, can we just bring to conclusion one of the other billions of lawsuits that are still pending against him instead of starting another one that's going to go on forever? And then I read... I read what was actually happening. And, uh, you know, Brian, I this is this does not happen unless every I is dotted, every T is crossed. Yeah. And holy, 
Wow. Yeah, that's a great comment. Holy shit. Because when, like Norman, when he, they started going into such detail, and he knew that there was only 11,000 square feet, not 34,000 square feet, and it's worth this. And he said it was worth that. I'm going, this more, they just bent him over a table. He's, he's done. That, the second time around, hearing that and hearing her delivery of the square foot, Oh and, and my, my students, you could hear them. I was sitting in the front row. I wasn't even going to sit behind to see if they were paying attention. I sat in the front row. I'm staring at the large screen and I can hear them like moving or fidgeting or laughing at those numbers. I mean, it was just outrageous. Well, yeah. The, you know, all the numbers they had were just solid. I mean, there was no speculation. None. There was no, it could be this. It could be that. It's like, he knew this. We can prove that. They're not going to come out and say he had knowledge of something in this press conference, knowing full well there'd be blowback from Donald Trump if they couldn't prove it. So right. that just told me he's screwed, blued, and tattooed. And here comes, here, here will come in the next few weeks, I believe, what I've said all along, he's going to get indicted. Well, yeah, and Brian, like, I, I'm so excited. I want to ask Brian one more thing. Okay, don't you think a split screen of Alvin Bragg and Michael Cohen today would have been good? <laughs> Yes. I, I talked yeah. to Michael Cohen actually after this came I'm down. I'm sure you did. He was, he was, as, I mean, he was as energetic as, as a popcorn kernel on a frying pan. I just want to point something out too. I think this is the very first time that all of the nerd vendors have been smiling at the same time. <laughs> so it's just going to be one screenshot this yeah. time. I don't have to go through all of the hours and hours of footage to, oh, okay, you're smiling now. And, you know, but, you know, Norm, I want to, I want to go to you, but, but before we continue, I do think it's important to point out that I'm not entirely sure we would be here if it weren't for the extraordinary investigative reporting of Suzanne Craig and Russ Butner, who published that groundbreaking, massive, and I think game-changing story in the New York Times on October 2nd, 2018. So props to them. I hope they are getting the credit they so richly deserve. Agree completely, and it shows the value of investigative reporting when it's done. Right. Not often enough, yes, when it's done. I, you know, besides Alvin Bragg, the other person who I think is quite nervous today is Charles Reddick, who is the <laughs> commissioner of the Internal Revenue Service, Ooh, put right. in by Trump with right. an enormous set of conflicts of interest and outrage that he is there, that he was there, that he's still there. But it's hard for me to imagine now, given all of this, that it will be possible for the IRS to stay out of this. And if I were uh, Richie Neal, the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, mm -hmm. uh, if I were Ron Wyden, the chair of the Senate Finance Committee, I today would be calling uh, Charles Reddick and saying, you're going to have to come into our committee's and answer a few questions. And he has to be put on the hot seat and it's time to get rid of him anyhow. But you know, remember lurking in the background here was Trump taking nearly a billion dollars uh, in uh, credits on his uh, federal taxes that are most likely completely bogus. Mm -hmm. So we're not just talking about uh, the uh, Tish James figuring out a way to basically uh, rip up the Trump organization. We're also talking about the possibility that Trump, beyond losing a lot of his properties directly, and the IRS could just go in and seize these properties, but also he could be hit with a tax bill that would truly bankrupt him. The 200 million yeah. would be chump change. And I do have to say, Jen, if, if he were your client, the first thing I would do is say, I need cash in advance. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the lawyers yesterday that I saw in court was got to more of those hats. Got his three million. Up three front. million. That's right. Well, otherwise he's not getting a lawyer as it should be. And and Norm, to your point, I think I think Sue Craig and Russ Buehner always also broke that uh, he didn't pay because he lost a <laughs> billion dollars in one year because he's such a good businessman. And such a great deal maker. I don't think he paid taxes for almost two decades. So um, that yes, that might come come back to bite him. 
<laughs> Poor guy. Um, I'm also, though, really curious because we've touched on this before, not in this context, because who knew what was happening with Tish James. Um, but how all of these cases, there are so many, so many different wheels spitting uh, and a lot of them are, aren't related. But uh, I had to think that that. Oh, where'd Norm go? I'm, I'm, there we go. I lost um, you for a minute there. Yeah, but you're back. Um, that that uh, it, are they going to have to not coordinate because they're they're separate? But like, I'm just wondering, like, how yeah, they might impact each other. Like, who's going to go first? Because we had talked about are. that before. What do you mean? They already the the Justice Department people I know in the Justice Department have been choreographing a lot of this. Oh, all right. So it's uh, it's it just that's a good word. That's yeah. better than coordinate. Yeah, it's uh, they have. Is it like with... synchronized swimming or something? <laughs> That's the and analogy. Donnie can't swim. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, it's a tough room for Donnie. Um, but yeah, actually, they... I just spoke with Dahlia, and she described him as a greased watermelon, which is <laughs> 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 like my favorite thing right now. That's... Yeah, he's pretty greasy. But uh, yeah, the <laughs> DOJ since uh, uh, since Merrick Garland came on board has been coordinating the efforts. There is nothing that's going on that, that Garland's office doesn't know about. That much I know for a fact. There's nothing that's, there's, they're not going to be, they weren't blindsided by anything that happened in the January 6th committee hearing. They weren't blindsided by this. They know. Uh, now, how much they are involved intrinsically in the day-to-day, -day, no, not, not so much. But if there's stuff to be had and to be told, Garland is so meticulous, and I know this for a fact from years of covering him, that he's a meticulous man who's marching down the path with and loaded 44, and there ain't going to be no Donald no more. That's, everyone has doubted Garland, but I don't. I think that it is just a very, you just look at it, it's like peeling back the layers of an onion. Naturally, you would go with it this first. This is, this is just the opening salvo. And it, and yeah. and a a civil suit do, is not nearly as 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 horrific as you know criminal charges, but they're coming. So yeah, yeah. I, how could they not? And Jen, that is, uh, you, you know, you mentioned earlier. Norm Norm mentioned the question about Deutsche Bank and and uh, that's a great you one. know you 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 uh, flag the other account, I think two accounting firms. Too. Thank you, Kushmer Wakefield and, and the one Mazar, Mazars that has been cooperating. Um, but it it really does beg the question, you know, and, and we've been saying about this about Donald for a long time. The two questions. First of all, he's he none of this happened in a vacuum. He certainly didn't do this by himself. Uh, he needs to pay the consequences of his criminal actions for sure. But he had a lot of help um, yeah. and happy to see that uh, his adult uh, offspring are, are also uh, being included in this along with like the 7 billion LLCs he spun off. Uh, so I was glad, I mean, just the thoroughness of this, but so the first question is, um, doesn't this sort of beg for some kind of corporate accountability beyond the tiny little mom and pop shop that is the Trump organization. And secondly, what are we going to do with uh, Trump Tower when, when it's in our possession? Homeless shelters. <clears throat> I know that question was directed at me, but I'm going to actually answer a different one because I'm in that kind of mood. Um, <laughs> You're Go for it, you renegade <laughs> nerd. I want to say something. That's the nerds really... are just like breaking out tonight. It's awesome. I, I want to say something back to my assignment. Um, okay. One of the one of the federal statutes that are on page nine um, for which the referral is going to be made is making a false statement to a financial institution. It's, it's different than the normal false statement statute that's been used, which is 18 U.S.C. 1001. This is 18 U.S.C. 1014 share some things in common. What's important though, let me just say it's important. One of the hardest things to prove to a jury when it comes to, um, and also to survive on appeal, a conviction, when it comes to white collar type crimes is proving the state of mind um, necessary for conviction. Right. And what's interesting about this is there's two branches to this false statement to financial institutions offense. And one of them only has a knowingly 
mental state. The other branch of it has willfully. And then the other, the point is, um, the point here is that knowingly making a false statement to let's say a federally FDIC insured bank for the purpose of obtaining a loan, you know, the standards knowingly. The the willfully mm -hmm. one is just about inflating assets. You need to prove that willfully. And, and I, I may sound like this is this is more than splitting hairs here. This actually is, it goes to being meticulous. For so, for someone like Garland, you know, of course there's probable cause here, but he's thinking down the road, not just an indictment, but you Perfect. don't come for the king and not get him. Right. And again, what are the jury instructions going to look like? You know, is it proving beyond a reasonable doubt that someone knowingly um, falsified their financial statements is a lot easier than proving that someone willfully inflated the value of an asset. It, it just, it, it makes a difference in terms of what you're asking the jury to believe. I, I just mm -hmm. think this is, and, and if Brian's right, and this is coordinated, uh, that footnote on that page didn't come out of thin air. Someone said, what statutes does this look like to you? And they handed those to her. Is my best guess. I would not have thought about 1014. I would have thought about the other statute that they also um, raise. Anyway, um, so I, I, wanted to, I wanted to say that the other question I'm answering that you didn't ask, because um, you <laughs> mentioned the other- I did. I just did it in my head. <laughs> the other defendants, because um, you know what's exciting about this is um, thinking, You know, it's, it's easy to think in the realm of, okay, well, Donald or Weisselberg or like the the enterprise. But when you start, when you actually look at the complaint, not every allegation is made, civil allegation is made against all the people. Mm -hmm. When I'm thinking in the world of the future criminal allegation, I'm thinking, <coughs> what are the things, if you're going to flip <coughs> or Eric or what's yeah. that? Or, or I, I wonder if his wife's already flipped. She hasn't been named in this suit. But she, I don't know that she was close to the business no, enough. No, but, but I, it would be Ivanka in my in my mind. Yeah. But the question is, what what of these facts alleged in the civil complaint bring her in mm -hmm. enough that yeah. she would be someone who wouldn't want to go to jail? When do we find that out? If if we find that out, well, you have to read it. And that's you know, 200 pages. Oh, the two, yes. Okay. I cool. mean, but that's I, my question. I, so that, that is what this document well, lays out. The other thing is they've got to, I don't know what this, I, I know federal law, but I don't know um, under New York state law what they're, when they have to file their response. And, you know, and, it, and if everyone's actually been served or this complaint has just been filed, now they've got to actually go out and serve process and all these people. But at some point we're going to see a response. Are they going to do a joint response? Or is anyone hiring their own lawyer? Would this be the good time for your cousin to well, find her own attorney? If she's no. smart, she'll get her own well, attorney. Yeah. Because so, listen, the, the, you know, one of question Ivanka, is that, civil suit is how long it will take. And of course, yeah. we're going to see every delay tactic uh, used uh, in the book and elsewhere by Trump. But I don't want to get away from this, uh, Mary, having mentioning the uh, adult children uh, without going back to the disgusting uh, former Attorney General Bill Barr, Oof. who said, well, it was outrageous that they went after these kids. They're just kids. Yeah. They Aww. had nothing to do with it. You know, as if they're all like uh, Barron's age. Right. Uh, and they're, you know, not just knee deep in this. They're in it up to their eyeballs and beyond. They were running mm -hmm. things. Yep. And, you know, if we get back to who might turn, I can imagine one of the kids turning. Uh, I can also imagine Donald fingering the kids and saying that they ran it and he didn't. Mm -hmm. He'll throw everybody under the yeah. bus. hundred percent. But yeah. at the same time, you know, let's keep in mind now that she's made this criminal referral, all of those junior accountants, many of whom were in the room or who took orders directly from Weisselberg, who were told by Weisselberg, the boss wants this done, who don't have a lot of resources, are going to be thinking, you know, I could be indicted here and I got to believe that they're the ones who are the first going to go to any prosecutors and say, I'll do anything you want. I'll tell you everything. Here's the chapter and verse. And some of them have paper, I'm sure, uh, that will reflect it. Uh, those are the ones who are the most likely to really uh, uh uh, stick it into the big boys. Like the January 6th hearing with the Hutchinson. 
Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I don't know who it was. It actually, Norm, it might have been you. Somebody on Twitter a couple of days ago uh, said, you know, that Donald's legal team is is just discovering that he doesn't control the entire federal judiciary because of <laughs> Judge Deary is not being particularly uh, kind to their stupid arguments and by the same token i think they're finding out that it isn't just about them and alan weisselberg it's it's about all of these other minor players who probably did it you know they probably didn't even recognize their existence in the same room who who have a lot uh, at stake as well um and just because not because they're involved but because they're witnesses um and Getting back to the thing with uh, the adults' offspring, who but like Donnie has like five kids. I mean, I feel terrible for them. He has five children. Ivanka has like three kids. I mean, these, these are adult human beings with their own lives. Um, Ivanka is the only one who has means outside of the family. So two billion worth. Mm hmm. Uh, yes. From Just the Saudis. Recently, two billion. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, more than that. So I, I mean, like, who's on what side is her bread buttered? I think is what the question she needs mm -hmm. to be asking well, herself. She's like her father, it's it's she's going to be about herself, right? Yeah. Of course, they all are. It just depends on what that cal calculus is, right? I like what's Donnie going to do, right? What's Eric going to do? They don't have anything beyond. They're all on cocaine. That's what oh. they're going to do. Well, is he? The question is: Is your uncle going to bring them in closer and use flattery to keep them in line, or is he going to use? Threats. anger and threats what do you think i think he could do both i, I think he'll what i've seen of donald trump and you know him far better than i do but every time i saw him he always started out with the flattery and, and then when almost did, immediately with the flattery yes and then when flattery didn't work then he went to well you know it's okay anyway he would uh, you know he would equalize and equip you know equivocate and then when that didn't work then he went to the threats it almost every time i saw him in the white house that's the way it works. So yeah. some, he's going to do all of them. <laughs> and because flattery is hard for him, he'll give it like two seconds. Yeah. And then yeah, he'll really shift. No, you bullshit. Very, yeah. Well, no, one no, thing we know won't work with the kids. He can't <laughs> threaten them to cut them out of the will. Uh, <laughs> there won't be anything left. There's nothing there. <laughs> well, you know, no. what's funny about that, Mary, you, you maybe know better than I, but when I interviewed Michael Cohen, he said that he, when he spoke with the kids, there was a time when none of those kids, all of them came to him and said, I don't want to end up like my father. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't be <laughs> um, Well, they, 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 did. they didn't do a good enough job <laughs> to prevent that. Uh, no, and again, I, I think it's just by accident of marriage. Ivanka is the only one who has any kind of independence. Yeah. How quiet has she been? We don't hear anything from... Uh, Avanka or Jared. She's Mark Meadows quiet. <laughs> She's going to have an interesting uh, high holidays ahead. <laughs> That's uh, right. That, yeah, Yom Kippur especially yeah, is yeah. going to be... Uh, you know what? That would be really interesting when the book opens. They yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> she, that, is, that's the window. <laughs> that little window going to Yom Kippur, Kippur and atonement. Yeah, that's, that's good. Oh, she, <laughs> you can see the rabbi go, they're coming in for atonement? Okay, everybody else tomorrow. <laughs> I'd like to be a part of Tiffany's inner circle tonight, too. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm, you know, I don't, hmm, I th I would think that ultimately she's going to be relieved. Well, you, you would think that she's uh, saying all those years where he shunned me, he shut me out. Thank God. Hey, I say that every day. No, yeah. but I, <laughs> But yeah, I think I, I think she's going to find that she's quite try and she tried really hard oh, yeah. not to be cut you know out. What I want to, I bet she and uh, um, I get, I, I bet she and Baron have a nice group group chat going. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't even know nice, if they know each other to, to, to be honest, but you know they're weird that way. Um, I, the other thing, and you know we touched on this a little bit, but but uh, somebody asked how a version of how long is this going to take? And her response was it's up to the judge. So that leads me to believe that um, they, they have to respond fairly soon. 
But what, in what way? Lost Norm again. Oh, he's like, he's like a ninja. He's coming in. <laughs> Is that um, there? <laughs> Do we know who the judge is? Uh, how, has the judge been assigned? Okay, so how, how does that work? Because if, if according to the AG, the, the judge is the one who's going to determine, which makes sense, of course, but... Oh. Go ahead. It's Sorry. by lottery, isn't it? Who, who, whoever's next in line, I mean, we'll get it. I think Mary, what she's, I think what she's talking about is the equi equitable relief piece of this. Maybe the judge, when she's asking for a judge to use authority under the business corporation statutes to cancel the um, certifications, maybe it's for the equitable relief. I, I have not looked to see whether they're asking for any, any preliminary orders or I miss, is this a bench trial and not a jury no. trial? I just don't know why why she specifically said but other there may be specific things under the business law statutes that you need a judge's the judge if you win the case then or you go sorry i'm saying this wrong under the business corporation statutes there's certain things you can do including dissolution which she says she's not asking for based on a pattern of criminal activity so maybe there's only a piece of it that she's saying would be going to a judge to do but i hmm. but the rest of the case i think is just your standard um, complaint, and now they need to answer it within whatever time the um, New York State Court procedure rules say. It could yep. be 30 days or 20 days, 45, right. I don't know what, how many days. Right. And they have okay. to read at least 10 pages a day, baby. <laughs> that's, that's a, that's a I mean, that attorney, she's busy. That Alina Haba, I mean, she's a busy, busy lawyer. How, how can she juggle I, all of her. these cases in her? Uh, strip mall office it, i don't know i mean i think she might have to hire She's some over her head with this one some uh, paralegals or something uh you know norm you 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 mentioned alvin bragg before and i think a lot of people tweeted like uh about him and and how bad <laughs> he looks potentially um what what do you think uh or how do you think this recasts his a, what I think was an egregious decision a few months ago to ignore lead prosecutors who'd been on the case for months before Bragg even got into office uh, to just do nothing. And then I guess he's tweeting out very defensively that the case is ongoing. But what do we make of that? All right, it's 20 days, I think, is a standard. There may be variations for their response oh. to be due. Okay, okay cool. I, I just, it would seem to me that Bragg is uh, in a real box right now. You know, you could, uh, I suppose, make a case that you don't want to move ahead with an indictment unless you're sure that you can get a conviction and they weren't quite there. I wouldn't have made that case. And clearly the experienced prosecutors who are ready to go with this um, were frustrated enough that they quit. Mm -hmm. Now that we have so much more. And there's chapter and verse here of violations of statutes. Um, you know, this is criminal fraud. It's criminal tax fraud. It's, it's much more. Uh, I, I just don't see how you can, after all of this, not indict. And, uh, you know, if, if the feds move forward with an indictment based on a lot of this, and he doesn't, uh, if I were the governor, I'd be looking into uh, whether I've got the authority to remove him and put somebody yeah. else uh, in charge. Uh, right. I'll Norm, tell you, I, I had hoped originally that Eliza Orleans would uh, win that race. Yeah. You know, she's a, 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 done a lot of uh, uh, public defender work with some of the worst cases. She is tough as nails and smart as could be. Mm -hmm. And if uh, he doesn't move forward and is replaced, boy, would she be the perfect one to put in there. She would yeah, I, nothing to see justice served here. Exactly. Now, and New York doesn't always make the right decisions, no, unfortunately. But sometimes yeah. we do, Tish mm -hmm. James. Uh, and and yeah. isn't, it, uh, isn't it possible that the governor has the power to transfer the case to Tish James? Or am I making that up? Because I don't know anything about this know. stuff. Okay. I think um, there's a. I think there can. I, I think it would be a little unusual, not. But I think that that 
the governor has the power to give additional criminal law enforcement authority to the AG because they have very right. specific. But at this right. point, I don't think you could just do it in the middle of a case, though. Yeah, yeah. that would okay. look bad if you could. Uh, Alvin Bragg, by the way, tweeted out about it what hour ago. Our criminal investigation concerning former President Donald Trump, the Trump Organization, and its leadership is active and ongoing. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't question. No, I don't question where, it either, but I mean, going, come on. You know where it's going, when it's going to get there. Yes. And, and for the love of God, what the hell's taking so long? Let's All of you have been on your Twitter game, um, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention a tweet uh, that Jen sent earlier today and i just like totally blanked on it i've been thinking about it all day because i didn't have a chance to respond to it sorry i have to gather my thoughts i'm just like i th you know what does like happiness like kill brain cells because i'm not used to that feeling it's possible <laughs> it's possible um you know one of the things that's worried me um besides the whole slip slippery watermelon <laughs> thing which is watermelon. better than uh better than teflon because it's sort of more apt uh by the way the grease watermelon has to be underwater where you're talking yes. i mean if you've been to summer camp just well, trump's underwater right now baby <laughs> in all sorts of ways yeah. um so is is this idea that because it's taken so long and there are so many cases now that it really if you're inclined to support donald and believe donald that it it is kind of unfathomable right there is this surreality to the whole like how can one person possibly have committed so much crime over such a long period of time and it's only now catching up with him. I mean, I think, you know, one answer to that is he never should have run for president. Um, it's just something Amen. he's probably regretted uh, every day for the last six years. But but still, it does kind of worry me a little bit. But I with today, though, um, I'm less concerned about that because numbers, it's numbers, it's money. And that's why I think, uh, again, Suzanne Craig and, and Russ Butner in an article that came out a year ago um, about not about Donald's inherited wealth, but about his, his tax, not paying taxes ever. Was it just that he, it's not that he paid zero taxes. He paid like tiny amounts of taxes, you know, and people understand that people understand, wait a minute. Oh, I just remembered what the tweet was. I, Attorney General James uh, informed us that Donald value at various times Donald valued uh, Mar-a-Lago at seven hundred and fifty million dollars, which if, if you've ever been there, we would realize is just hysterical. Uh, and the real valuation of the property is about seventy five million, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I think Jen, I'm pretty sure you said. Is that including the top secret documents that he said? <laughs> that wasn't you. I wish I could take credit for that, but it wasn't me. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, oh, why you know, do, why do well, I get to... one thing I, I think it's worth mentioning uh, as well. Um, the only lawyer as pathetic as Rudy Giuliani is Alan Dershowitz, <laughs> who is now a Newsmax legal analyst. No. And went on Newsmax to defend Donald today by saying, you know, this was all, uh, if anybody suffered here, it's the financial institutions and it's all on them. And why should you get Trump on something that has nothing to do with defrauding anybody else? And, uh, you know, which is, yeah, I just, it made me wonder whether uh, Dirsch wakes up every morning wondering how he can soil himself even more. <laughs> well, then he has to call Rudy to find out. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. The press uh, conference and I haven't you know, seen, uh, you know, the hair dye dripping down yet, but uh, <laughs> everything else. But, you know, I, I think getting back to the point that Mary was making, it, the taxpayers in New York and the taxpayers around the country are the ones who are defrauded by all of this. That's right. It's yep. just like, you know, insider trading isn't just about somebody doing a little dirty dealing to make some money. It, it, if you buy a stock, uh, and you know it's going to go up a huge amount, or you sell a stock when you know it's going to plummet, somebody else is 
uh, selling that stock and not getting paid for it or buying a stock and getting screwed by it. Mm -hmm. And if Trump has defrauded uh, the government by uh, billions, uh, the rest of us have to pay for it. And that, I think, is going to be one of those elements that needs to be brought out with force. And that people I understand that it, this is not victimless crimes. Right. We're the exactly. victims here. Yeah, and uh, I think somebody know. read somebody wrote a book about that recently. But, but he brings. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's not, that, but it's not just about fun, public funds that are being deprived. It's also about supporting a kleptocracy. Yeah. And she That's kind true. of made that point in several different ways, she saying, did. you know, ordinary people. You know, we could get a better interest rate if we lied. You know, we could do all these things, but we yeah. go to jail. So it becomes a way, you know, white collar crime is a tool for advancement for people like Donald. And this is why this is what I write about. And uh, I mean, I just um, now I'm getting instead of being happy, now I'm all enraged because, you know, mm -hmm. you know, this well, is smiling. No, but, but it, it's infuri it's, okay. it's a happy much rate. more it than infuriating. It's a happy rate. It's, it's very infuriating. And the but the point is it was nice during this press conference for the AG to come out and point that out. Yes. And and tie people into it as to why it is important. And also more more than anything else, show how we would be screwed, blued, and tattooed, screwed to the wall. And that it equal justice has to be for everyone even if you're the former president of the United States. And, you and know, saying that and getting on top of that at the very beginning, to your point, Norm, is going to be very important going forward because it's going to bring a lot of the, the, the Trump. There are a lot of people who voted for Trump that don't necessarily like him. And by, by bringing in how he screwed them, that's going to further separate him. So all he's got left are people like, I mean, he couldn't even fill an arena of QAnon supporters in, in Ohio. He's down to people who pick their nose and wave it at him. This guy's done. That's. I mean, I don't know what that finger thing is, yeah. but it just looks like they would. I, I have to leave in, in a few minutes. Let me. I want to okay. mention one other person who's really important today. Who's it's going to get lost in the shuffle, mm -hmm. and that's Tom Barrick, who is yes. going on trial for uh, uh, acting as a foreign agent without registering to try and make money. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, and I think he's nailed on this. But yep. keep in mind that one of the areas of fraud that seems to have been off uh, to the side for a long time has been the Trump inaugural fund. We know that Donald Jr. lied about the money. The money was another slush fund that they took in and used for their own purposes. And that includes Kimberly Guilfoyle, as, uh, who is not going to escape some of this. If Barrick is faced with a substantial prison sentence, I can imagine that he would have a lot of useful information that would implicate uh, members of the Trump family with yet another uh, likely prosecution. So there's a whole lot more going on here. Ivanka, especially, I recall that she was in, in the middle of some of those deals. Ivanka and Don Jr. Uh, and uh, Guilfoyle and no doubt others. Uh, I think Lara, I think uh, Eric's Lara. wife, uh, who's on the payroll. For, I guess she she and Kimberly Guilfoyle get paid for being in relationships with the... I, I don't really I know how any Kimberly of that works. But... And say the best is yet to come. And she was right, wasn't she? Yes. Not, just yeah. not in the way she intended. Um, I gotta Mary, go. Do you think? Do you think Thank Hallmark? You has, Thank you so much Hallmark. for being here. See you soon. I, Mary, do you think Hallmark has like a special um, greeting Trump card, Hallmark. dear cousin? I hope. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just gonna stop. <laughs> you, you got me on that one. They will now. <laughs> Oh. There's money to be made off of it. Hey, Trump might do it himself if he can make money off of it. Uh, you know, the other thing, because we've been saying versions of, you know, you or I would be in prison forever. But you know what? Most of us don't have the opportunity to steal government documents and uh, betray our country to that degree. So, again, this this is real. This This is something everybody can relate to. Uh, and and not only, you know, in terms of not paying taxes or committing fraud in order to get a loan, but that because Donald, yes, because he didn't pay billions of dollars in taxes, just as they never paid, they paid a tiny fraction of the estate taxes that they should have paid after my grandfather died, which, you know, that's hard for people to understand that it affects them, but that's like taking 
enormous sums of money out of the government to help uh, taxpayers. It increases everybody else's tax burden, et cetera. But the other thing, too, is that it, it just by his getting these loans illegitimately, it potentially prevented other businesses, legitimate businesses who who could have done good things if they had had access to such loans from from doing that. So, you know, that's just another instance, Jen, of how these are not victimless crimes. And, you know, I know that this is this is something incredibly important to you. You dedicate a lot of your professional life to this. You write about this uh, in 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 eloquent and and vitally important ways we need to change people's perceptions of what white collar crime is i know it, it, it's it and maybe this will help like you know maybe maybe this is the service donald does for us is that he he helps by all of his alleged criminality uh he helps people understand why you know what it isn't okay uh, even if you're rich, or especially if you're rich, to um, commit fraud against the government that you ostensibly run, or it isn't okay to commit espionage just because you were in the Oval Office for four years. Is that a question or a comment? <laughs> it's, you know me, it's all of those things at once. Yeah, I, I you know, I, and it's I, a glowing I, endorsement, so you could acknowledge that. Yeah, too. I mean, I think it's great um, that people are more people are paying attention to this and this idea. You know, Tish James said it's not a victimless crime, and um, to the extent that I think one of the the, the the repeated thing that Alan Dershowitz is saying, and that you hear people saying, "Well, don't, you know, you know, Wall Street, they're big boys; they can look out for themselves." As if, and let me, let me be clear, they're, part of this is they're trying to make a legal argument, it seems, and that's a, it's a bad legal argument. And they're trying to make a moral argument, and it's a bad one as well. So it's a bad legal argument because these statutes, criminal statutes, when it involves fraud, um, and the ones we're looking at here, don't require the government to prove um, that anyone lost any money or that they were deceived. That's not what it's about in terms of the elements. In terms of the sort of moral argument, you've been, you've been tackling that. You know, if there's just this sort of... Um, you know, uh, old boys network or a gentleman's agreement that some people in the society are going to steal and be corrupt and the rest of us have to follow the rules, then we have what's called the dual state, which, yep. is, which is a piece of kleptocracy. And the, the great book Kleptopia by Tom Burgess talks about that worldwide. And, um, you know, we don't want that. That's what Putin has. And that's what Trump um, is, is it was trying to create here. And, um, you know, I really love when Norm said, it's going to be the low level account. Mm -hmm. um, right. And that um, that really resonates um, in my career. Right after I got out of law school, I worked at a big law firm and then I went in house to what I thought was my dream job. And I may have mentioned this. It became my nightmare job. Mm -hmm. and it turns out that these people who I really trusted and liked were cooking the books. And the person who finally the, the, the truth came out after a merger and the new management was looking to like take over anyway you know, kick out the, you know, the competition. It mm -hmm. only helped when the, when they found out that the, that our people had been cooking the books, committing fraud. And the person who, um, who, who ratted them out was some, an accountant who was just below the level of the people who got the, the stock options and the big money. They, they had him doing all the dirty work, but they didn't cut him in on the deal. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's self-interest that makes people sing. Um, oh. you know, and I'll never forget that. It was a really horrific experience. And that was why one of the reasons why I was became very interested in white collar crime to see what appeared as ordinary, nice people doing really awful things and people's lives were turned up upside down and destroyed. Um, it made quite an impression on me in my twenties. Yeah. yeah. And, and, I, and no, go ahead, Mary. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, just think about, uh, whether we're talking about, uh, what's happening in New York, uh, whether we're talking about what's happening in Fulton County, Georgia, or January 6th. Um, th think about how many people have been harmed and how many people have been involved uh, on the criminal end of the spectrum, which is, again, why uh, it is incumbent upon all of us to make sure that this is not just about Donald. This is about the Republican well, Party. Yeah. It's about the banks. It's about the system. Well, it's about clip, but the, Jen, I wanted to ask you a question because I've I've covered white collar crime for forty years, 
I have always seen a dual uh, justice system in this country. <laughs> Expo- there and criminally, there's one rule for for poor white and poor black people poor, for poor people, one rule for rich people. In white collar crime, one rule for those who are stealing. I mean, remember the I- the old saying too big to fail? But yes, yes. Oh, I'm not, let me be a little more clear. No, Having two justice fail. systems, uh, w- w- the dual state that was the, the, this guy in Germany, um, who I'm forgetting his name is, who'd written about that the guy, uh, Tom Burgess writes about in Kleptopia. It's mm-hmm. not that there's two, it's not simply that there's two systems of justice where the more powerful do better than the poor. Right. We know that's always existed. What right. the dual state is about is how the monarch or the leader of the organization has cronies around him who are allowed to crime with the explicit, not the implicit, but the explicit permission, the way- That, that was my question. Do you think, and that's the, the, because in covering government, I don't know, I mean, there was a standard for John F. Kennedy that was different from everyone else. There was a standard for Richard Nixon. There was mm-hmm. a standard for, for Ronald Reagan. I mean, and Obama used the Espionage Act to go after people nine times that he didn't like. There was a certain, there's always- We don't been, have, we don't have the- Trump came closer to what I'm talking about. We don't have the yeah. president of the United States telling the head of General Motors and the head of, you know, right. whatever company that we know saying, of. And we see in Florida, they're trying to do this. If you don't do right. what we say, mm-hmm. we're going to bring antitrust cases against you. And we're going to let you, we're going to put these corrupt, we're going to, if we see someone being really corrupt at the top of a company, we're going to say, we're not going to charge you and indict you, but you got to cut us in on the action. And right. we need, secretly need a kickback. It's yeah. much is, it more, different, is it any different if like for in too bad, you know, too large to fail? If it, is it any different? Aren't the results the same? I, I mean, I don't know. I'm asking you because I. I well, I mean, it's interesting. I think it's I think it's a, it's it's a slippery slope. And in fact, the too big to yeah, fail came yeah. out of the savings and loan crisis. I discovered that right. writing my first book. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough. Yeah, I covered that. And, and what was so annoying about that is that they were protecting very large, very rich banks. And, and by the way the best banking I've ever had is with the smaller banks, more intimate where you can go in and talk to a branch manager and they know you and, you know, they, they now have, you know, but if it's too big to fail, you can't get service from, you know, you can't get loan service. You can't get telephones, all of that. I, I wonder if, if the intent is, it, 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 does it matter the intent or does it just matter the result? Are you, if we're, are we talking about the political philosophy thing here or a law yeah. thing? No, no. I mean, that's where I'm going with it. Is that? I mean, that's yeah, this is a whole like we need to sit around and we could talk for hours about. Yeah, we're getting in the weeds, but I mean, I think it's an important point, and it's good. To, but but it might be beyond our purview at the moment, um, because I I just I I want to focus on celebrating the fact that. Uh, <laughs> Yes, we all do. Yeah, um, I want to acknowledge though that people and um we know about this, folks in the comments. We can't I can't yes. comment to you, but I can see what you're saying. And we are we are aware of news coming out from a lot of different sources that apparently uh Ginny Thomas may have reached some kind of cooperation agreement with the January 6th commission. I'm not sure what exactly that means. Um but it means it should mean standing. nothing. It what it means well, is they approached her. The, the last I heard, and this was yesterday, they approached her about uh, 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 coming before the January 6th commission, and they were negotiating how they would get information from her, whether it's going to be a videotaped testimony, whether it's going to be a statement, whether it's going to be written, or whether she's going to show up live. But I'll guarantee you, whatever she does, if she does anything at all, it's going to be well choreographed before she gets out there. It's going oh, to yeah. be yeah. everything else the January 6th hearing is done. For those people who want to know, that's what it's about. Yeah. And it, I mean, I, you know, I'm pretty sure that this is not what something that's going to come up next week. Um, just to remind everybody, uh, the nerds are live streaming the next uh, January 6th committee hearing, which is exactly a week from today on the 28th. For some bizarre reason, it's not lo- it's not prime time. I don't it get it. I don't, it's like it is out. such it is such a. um I it's think I know why. Me. Okay, tell well, me. I, okay, I, I think this makes some sense because if you want to cover a lot of ground and you do it during the daytime, mm-hmm. then the best sound bites can be out on Twitter oh, and the okay. evening shows. The evening That's shows fair. can have the sound bites and then have people like us r- wrapping our comments around it. That's what I think. That's fair. Uh, it's still, I, I still prefer it to be in prime time, but that at least, that does make sense. Um, I just think it's more exciting. I don't know. No, it's, 
<laughs> it kind of is, but I, and I do think that, that more people are available to watch and there is something about watching it live from beginning to end without commentary that, that I think is, is useful, but unless of course it's our commentary. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm, I'm so relieved that that's starting up again. And you know what? I, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna end soon. Um, I so appreciate your taking the time, uh, and having yet another emergency, I have a feeling there are going to be a lot of emergency <laughs> sessions between now and I, I don't I know. I die probably. <laughs> That's the problem. Uh, but I just, I just wanted to, but before I get your your final thoughts, I just wanted to say that this is, I think we see what happens. Well, one when when women are on the show, but also when when we don't give up when uh, people follow the law and uh, you know, wherever it leads and believe in the concept that no one is above the law, uh, which, you know, many people don't do. So we may indeed be seeing a turning point. It really feels like that to me. I know we've been disappointed many times before, but I, I, I have a lot of uh, faith in, in people like Fonnie Willis and Tish James and uh, even Merrick Garland at this point, And of course the January 6th committee. So I think we're seeing the fruits of, of years worth of labor and the refusal to concede an inch uh, to the status quo. And, and that is, that is something to celebrate besides of course, the fact that Donald's in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Brian, any last thoughts? Yeah, I can't wait to see him indicted. I don't think we'll ever see him in 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 irons. But uh, Mary, I'll, I'll tell you what I I watched that thing live today, and the one overall impression I, I still come away with is this: you know, you it's just like the 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 horror movies where you you know you see the the protagonist running away from from the, the bad guy, or in this case, it's the bad guy running away, you know, as fast as he can, mm -hmm. and here, here's the slow footed sure-footed guy following him and eventually they corner him in the alley and you know get him and that's that's i just every time i see this on tv donald trump is a cornered new york sewer rat with a piece of uh exposed uh, pizza in his mouth and merrick garland's come to take it and well he eats pizza with a knife and a fork and that's enough in my view to uh indict him he doesn't uh, like dogs that's enough to indict him for me uh, well he doesn't like animals at all but um jen first of all everybody read jen's book if you haven't already which you should have read already big dirty money and uh, i want to see the trophy behind me so i have a little someone gave me um i'm that putting one way um <laughs> I have this new uh, painting of Ponzu um, from, and that's so nice. Um, and then right below that, since I was redecorating my office, this is at work um, on the shelf. I found some things this way, this way um, on the shelf. Um, you can see there's some deal trophies from when I worked at Fidelity Investments. The, the little mm -hmm. pyramid thing was my five year gift. And then there's that, like the other thing is um, uh, this, the loose site thing that is a, the, you know, the, um, what do they call this tombstones? It was from when we won like best fix, fixed income manager of the year. But then right next wow. to it was my cheerleading trophy from little league football. I was a cheerleader. Wow. You and Eugene, you're uh, in rarefied air there. In the Midwest. And this brings me to my comment, which is people I know in the Midwest who had soured recently against Trump, like they hadn't voted for him, but they were always right. kind of quiet. They have, I can't get them to shut up. I, someone I know, a family member hmm. said, I'm so angry. And then I said, calm down. I thought they were going to have a heart attack. Because once once people start vocalizing yeah. that all they've been holding back. Yeah. Um, and especially for people like that. Oh, the, I see uh, you know my in-laws. What? I see you know my in-laws. Yeah. The <laughs> national security secrets, though. Yeah. It's just outrageous. Um, and if you remember the thing, the way we got the first we, the way the House convinced folks to do the first impeachment was was because of national security issues involving Ukraine. Um, you know, he's he's a traitor. He's he's a crook and a traitor. The crook stuff they were going to put up with if their taxes were lower, but no one wants to put up with a traitor. Right. And you know what? I think I think the bottom line is if people allow themselves to believe the truth and and the facts placed before them, you and I'm not obviously a lot of deluded people and and conspiracy theorists, but you know, decent 
grounded people who allow themselves to to be open to the fact and the truth of what's going on, you have no no choice but to be outraged. Tonight, however, we're happy. So let's There's leave on that note. There's joy in Mudville tonight. <laughs> what? There's joy in Mudville tonight. The mighty there, Casey has struck out. There is indeed. So Brian Karam, Jen Taub, Norm Ornstein, thanks, guys. I so appreciate your taking time to discuss this awesome news. And uh, I will see you next Tuesday. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us for this emergency session of the Mary Trump show with the nerd Avengers. Um, I hope you got as much out of that as I did because uh, this is complicated stuff and it's always great to have these amazing human beings uh, to help us sift through it and make sense of it uh i hope you all are feeling as as upbeat as as we are and uh thank you also for your comments don't forget um i have an interview with dahlia lithwick fellow nerd avenger tomorrow night about her phenomenal new book lady justice uh that's at 7 p.m eastern 4 p.m pacific youtube.com slash politicon uh Next Tuesday, we will have our usual strategy session with the Nerd Avengers. Uh, I think at that point, we're down to 42 days before the midterms. And then the day right after that, on September Wednesday, September 28th, we will be live streaming the hearings. Uh, I think the hearings start at 1 p.m. Eastern, so that's 10 a.m. Pacific. We will start a little early uh, so we can sort of pre-game pre it and preview everything for you. Uh, we'll do running commentary as, as possible during. Um, we'll... Uh, you know, we'll be talking during the break and obviously we'll be wrapping up. We will have special guests joining us coming in and out. So I highly recommend that you be there for that. Uh, I will obviously give you plenty of, of heads up about when, when we will be starting um, all of that at youtube.com slash Politicon. While you're at Politicon's YouTube channel, please uh, subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. It just helps us get our numbers uh, higher, um, which is which is the goal. Like the episode if if uh, you want to leave a comment there. Click on this bell because that way you will be alerted every time a new video drops. Uh, so, uh, and that's just not episodes. That's also the shorter videos I'm doing uh, as well. And of course, you can listen in podcast form on Apple, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, a five-star review would be very much appreciated because it really does help other people find the show, which is also one of our goals here. Uh, and that's it. Um, I will see you tomorrow night. And in the meantime, please stay safe and be kind. <laughs>